Hello, this is Tendai from Med Tutors. In this video, I'll be answering a question that a lot of medical students have. When should I take the Yusinali Sikon exam? Before answering that question, if you haven't liked and subscribed to the Med Tutors YouTube channel, make sure you do so if you enjoy the content and make sure to follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook platforms. As many of you are aware, the USMLE Step 1 exam will be shifting to a pass-fail system. This is going to be a move from the traditional three-digit scoring system. Therefore, this year, 2021, is going to be a really important substantial year for those who are taking the USMLE Step 1 exam. This is because you're going to have an opportunity to potentially get a really good score within the three-digit scoring system. This video is going to be focused specifically on those students that are ready and are about to start the dedicated phase of USMLE Step 1 exam studying. Medical students are typically curious about how much time they need to prepare for this exam. If you're going to be in your specific focus dedicated period, that's going to be at a phase when you're spending at least 10 to 12 hours on a daily basis studying. And for this time, I would say you need about three to six months of optimum good dedicated study time. I wouldn't say take more than the six months because when you are in this dedicated phase of studying, you run the risk of burning out. So it's important to hit that optimum timing. If you find yourself ready before three months to take the exam, that's perfectly fine also. The timing range differs from student to student However, it is important to be able to give yourself some sort of time mark where you would like to take the exam. You're officially in your dedicated study time. You have a good idea of how long you want to take to study for the exam. The next important thing is going to be a target. You need to have a target that you're working towards, right? It's important to have a goal in mind, right? So you want to have that three digit score in your mind that you are working towards. And for this, I would say it's important to be one, realistic with yourself, right? You want to make a goal that's going to be attainable for you within the time frame in which you are planning to study for your exam. This is going to require you to have an efficient way to set a good goal for yourself. Therefore, as you are approaching and just before you get your dedicated study time, it's important to take an MBME exam. Once you take an MBME exam, this kind of gives you an idea where you are in terms of scoring at that time. One of the ways that you can find out how to set a really good target or goal for yourself is going to be by doing an NBME comprehensive basic sciences self-assessment exam. When you do this exam, it's going to give you a three-digit score. It's going to look similar to the score report you're going to receive when you write your USMLE Step 1 exam. This is a very useful assessment tool for students because it's going to give you a good idea of where you are ranging score-wise at that very moment of time. So what this basically means and what they're trying to tell us when they give us an NBME score report after we do a self-assessment exam is that at this very moment, you are scoring at this score, right? And what they have found with the research and data is that two thirds of the time when people write the exam within a week, they tend to score plus or minus 15 points as compared to the score they got in their self-assessment exam. So what does that mean to you? This pretty much tells me that this is going to be a really important way to assess my progress along the way as I'm getting closer and closer to my potential test date. So once you've taken your first NBME comprehensive self-assessment exam, you have a good idea of where you stand in terms of scoring at that 
very moment of time, right? And then you're going to use that to set yourself a target. And I'll say you want to kind of reach for about 25 to 30 points above what you get in your first exam and you want to work towards that goal. Now that you have your target and you know what you want to achieve score-wise as you continue to study, you want to periodically assess your progress, right? And this is going to be done so by continuing to do these NBME comprehensive self-assessment exams. MedTutors advises you to do at least three to four exams before taking your actual USMLE Step 1. We also advise you to do the UWorld self-assessment exams, the two UWorld self-assessment exams you can take also. So you want to fit those in between when you're taking the practice exams. You also want to make use of the NBME free 120. These are going to be questions that are going to be used and that you can apply using the USMLE interface. And these are going to be free questions that you can take. And I'll advise you to take these within one week of writing the USMLE Step 1 exams. I've just discussed about timing and how you want to approach deciding when to write the exam. However, things don't always go according to plan. You are obviously expecting your score to continue to rise right until you get to your target. So, what if you get to a point where the score isn't increasing anymore and you reach what we call a plateau phase? Or what if you get to a point where your score is declining as you progress and do more NBME exams? First thing you ask yourself is, have I maximized my studying, right? Am I making the most of one, my time and the resources I'm using to study? Have I been able to maximize that? Right? And is there any room for improvement in that? The second question you want to ask yourself is how close am I to my target goal? Right? If you find yourself that you're about five points from your target goal, you've been studying for about four months, you've gone through all the vast question bank and the resources we've talked about, I would say high time definitely. You can definitely go in and write the exam, right? You are close enough to your goal and if you take an MBME comprehensive self-assessment exam, you find yourself to your five points away from your target, which means that if you're going to take the exam within a week, 66% of the time, you're going to be plus or minus 15 points from what you have, which means if you are a good test taker, you can go and exceed the goal you have. However, if you find yourself at your borderline passing, and you're approaching your test date, right? And you find that if I take the exam, plus or minus 15, based on what I'm scoring, minus 15 is a chance that I might actually fail the exam. You're gonna have to make that tough decision of should I postpone my date, allowing me to give myself more time to study for the exam? These are definitely important questions you have to ask yourself because you're gonna have a narrower time window now in 2021 as the year it's going to go through within the 12 months to take this exam to get a three digit score. These are some of the typical scenarios that medical students are in as they are approaching taking the USMLE Step 1 exam. Like I mentioned, for each person, this is going to be a case by case system. So if you are in a position where you are making these tough decisions, which I would say are almost life-altering decisions you can reach out to med tutors and we can discuss this in more detail and help you to make the best decision that you can within your situation right because ultimately you want to put yourself in the best position to do well for your usmle step one exam